more replication, and then we get findings. What do we do with the findings? You'll, so what, right? So we have better methods, so we have these findings now. Well, we want to make an impact, obviously, in the academic community and the, in the world of science. And here, again, we have the same problem that was mentioned by Michaela uh, with uh, the sociolo sociological community. We've been importing work and models from the, the cognitive sciences, but very little has gone back to these other fields. We need interdisciplinarity to enrich ourselves, but so far it doesn't work very well on a reciprocal basis. I think ideally we can get some people in other fields hooked on what we're trying to do, a psychologist, a sociologist, a health science person like Alexander Bischoff, for instance, and then we have a foot in the other camp and we can work, but very often it's a problem of sustainability. If these people drop out or move on to different subjects and topics, there it goes. And it happened with, uh, to some extent with neuro-linguistic studies of interpreting uh, in Trieste. If, if you have the people in the other discipline no longer pursuing this as their major goal, uh, it cannot be sustainable. So we need to develop our own people, our own methods in order to, to continue studying the, the, the problems that require a lot of interdisciplinary input. So that's very difficult for this very small field to achieve, to have an impact uh, in the world of science, but it's no, uh, no easier to have an impact on real life. Uh, I'll just put, I talked about this in, in Ljubljana, I'll just put research isn't enough. We need research and development, meaning we can publish nice papers about uh, professional healthcare interpreting. No doctor is going to go out and, and read uh, interpreting right, or other journals where this might be published in order to change their practices. So we need to go out there and convince them and show them and demonstrate. It's not only the research, but the real impact uh, in order to change practices in society will come from what I could call development work, uh, uh, marketing our, our findings and explaining what they mean and why they are significant. Very difficult to, to change society with our findings. Okay, so much for impact, and I used marketing, market, and that's a, a big topic that's, that'll come up. To summarize our rather modest state, that's the basic message, and I think it echoes a lot what, what Daniel has been saying for many years. We are at a very modest level, but we're trying to develop and, and do better. So these are six areas where we need to develop. We need more people to do good work, but they need to be motivated. That's come up in the first round table on institutional frameworks. Uh, the main motivation is to hang on to a teaching job. I don't care about developing science. And, uh, and we said we have to live with this. We have to push them to do good work, even though they drop out of the field. At least we have a good PhD to, to work with. We have gained some knowledge by um, having a teacher complete a PhD thesis, even though they will not continue to do consistent research in the field. It's better than not having a, a good thesis at all. So the motivation for some people uh, has to do also with means. If we have grant funded projects, if we have money to pay people to do interpreting research, it works much better. Uh, and then also once we have people, we can tackle challenging material. Think of those 260 tapes that Alev mentioned that are there to be dealt with, to be analyzed, well, you need a lot of manpower or woman power to really tackle that job, and you need the motivation to do it and, and the means to do it. Uh, and it's not limited to, to that project, but in general, we need suitable methods. And I've tried to point out that this is really where a, a, we are still at a very modest state. If we have challenging material, what methods do we use to, to analyze prosodic features or nonverbal communication that happens in interpreted interaction. Still a lot of need for better models and descriptive frameworks. And here then comes the sixth M, the sixth factor, uh, where I feel very jeal jealous about, uh, of other fields, and that is the market. Yesterday we heard, oh, the localization industry, you know, they want these problems to be studied. Uh, and there is the media industry. They want things to be translated and they want research to be done. What is our market? I'm wondering, who, is, want, who wants us to study 
for instance, the effectiveness of children mediating in hospitals. Do the hospitals really want this research to be done? Do the, the legal systems, are they really pressuring us to do research on interpreting in the court settings? I have, we have a very weak market. We don't have people waiting for our findings out there. And sometimes if we do produce the findings, they don't even want to take them seriously. So the market, I think we can get really jealous compared to people working in, in, in uh, the, the software industry and, uh, and audiovisual translation, where there really is an industry to speak of. We don't have an, an industry. So this might be nice to have and to develop to find uh, sectors in society where they want us to, to do work. They might even make the material available. It says, here is something that we want you to, to work on. Very few situations where we have this sort of market. So I, for the time being, and in closing, I would focus on developing manpower and developing methods. Maybe the reason why they don't ask us to do research on various interesting problems is because they don't trust us to do good work. For instance, remote interpreting. There have been several studies on uh, the practice of remote interpreting in, in international institutions. They haven't been entrusted to universities, not even a network of universities, because we're not perceived as the center of excellence for empirical research on such topics. So maybe we need to get better first, uh, develop people who could do it, could do it well with the right methods, and then we'd have more chance of, of actually doing commissioned research on the impact of remote interpreting in the European Union. And several studies have already been done without our major involvement. Um, and developing manpower would mean this can, has to be done in the curriculum. So the final slide would be linking up uh, with institutional frameworks. So how do we do this within our institutional frameworks? I'll take the example of Vienna. We have a, a, a Bologna-style curriculum of a three-year BA in what is called transcultural communication plus a two-year MA. Uh, the usual, a typical format. And the question is, where do we start offering courses to develop, to lay the foundations for methodological and, and, and research expertise? We have lectures, introductory lectures at the BA level to have some groundwork. And then comes the two slightly overlapping MA programs with specializations. There's two specializations each. That's not our issue here, not our topic. But what is important is what do we offer in these largely professional MA programs in translation and interpreting that will help us cultivate uh, a base of, of research manpower? Well, we have a few credits, uh, theory courses, methodology, and I would suggest that this is where we preach the Ten Commandments that we learned from Andrew. Uh, not at the PhD level only, but starting at the MA level, uh, th they will be doing an MA thesis, and before they start doing this, they should know what is this thing called science and uh, a basic overview of the, of the fundamental issues of doing scientific work, two seminars, and an MA thesis. This is what we have. It hasn't been mentioned much. Last week in, in Vienna, we focused very much on the PhD level, but we realized that we can't only discuss research training at the PhD level because it depends on what you have before that. And I think we have an opportunity in this system uh, where you can lay the foundations at the MA level. And that will condition what you will need to do at the advanced level. Just last week there was a decision that Vienna will be moving to a three-year PhD, but the rest is still undecided. We don't know about coursework. We don't know uh, what courses will be offered. So this will be the structure in the institutional framework within which interpreting studies will need to be cultivated at the University of Vienna. And the question is, okay, we'll have this. What problems should we address? What should we study? I suggest, based on some of the discussions also yesterday, hybrid forms, overlapping forms, would be an interesting topic to pursue. Uh, this simultaneous consecutive mode, for instance, or re-speaking based live interlingual subtitling where the skill of an interpreter comes in in a, in a big way. Or e even intralingual subtitling using uh, voice recognition and re-speaking. Or the issue of 
dehumanization, the role of technology changing the interpreter's profession, remote interpreting is one example, but we could also turn it around and saying maybe the interpreter's work is already dehumanized in the sense that we don't perceive of the, uh, the interpreter as a human agent, and maybe the role of the interpreter should be less invisible. That's an ongoing process. So on the one hand, technology might be dehumanizing the role of the interpreter, but uh, research showing how active interpreters are sometimes or need to be in order to achieve effective communication uh, might actually push us to pursue the humanization, the, a, a more explicit role, more visible role for the human actor. English as a lingua franca is a big topic that also came up, and I think that's, that we share that concern. Uh, with interpreting, big problems doing interpreting from English that is very different or different from what some people are used to, or even uh, English as a lingua franca in competition with interpreting. We don't use interpreting because we have English as a lingua franca, and that the effectiveness of the two modes should be compared, has, you know, should be studied, and that's another problem that I suggest would need to be addressed with methods that are as good as possible. I'll leave it at that.